My name is Landon Blake. I am a licensed land surveyor in the state of California and Nevada. I am also a certified federal surveyor. Of all the different types of surveying that I do, boundary surveying is what I love the most. So that is my passion. So I want to tell you a little bit about uh, the book that I am trying to crowdfund. The title of the book is Practical Guide to Boundary Surveying for the Modern Land Surveyor. So what is the book about? The book is a step-by-step -step workflow to resolving pound, uh, parcel boundaries. So it, it starts at the very beginning step, identification of the subject parcels, and walks you through the whole process all the way to the last step, which is preparation of the survey deliverables for the client. Uh, so that's what the book's about, step-by-step -step workflow. How do you, given a parcel or set of parcels, how do you properly resolve those boundaries? Uh, the, the workflow that I'm going to teach in the book is the workflow that we use here at my company, Redefined Horizons, here in Central California. It's a workflow that I've developed uh, over two decades um, as a land surveyor, as a boundary surveyor. Um, I won't tell you that it's, it's perfect or it's bulletproof. It's something that we're continually working to improve here at Redefined Horizons, but we do have a good workflow and we make an effort to use that workflow. I think it helps us to do a better job on our boundary surveys and to be more efficient to produce uh, produce a more consistent uh, high quality product so i think that that workflow is really important uh, the work the workflow is fairly simple so it's not super complicated it has about a dozen steps in it um, and the other thing that i think is important is uh, you know the workflow that, that we use here at redefine horizons um, is not from the 1960s so a lot of the you know a lot of the uh, the, the reference material that's available to the modern surveyor is old. It was written decades ago. Now, I, I understand that some of the legal, the legal principles behind boundary surveying are timeless and they'll still apply, and, and I, I agree with that. I think that's true. Uh, but I also think, you know, that, that if uh, a workflow for boundary surveying um, does need to adapt and improve as uh, technology changes, you know, certainly uh, the personal computer and GPS and the total station, things like that, um, have uh, uh, the, avail the availability of records online. All of those things, those techno technological changes have changed how we actually execute boundary surveys. And so I think it's important. That's why I have modern in the title, Practical Guide to Boundary Surveying for the Modern Land Surveyor. So this isn't a book that's written for somebody that's, you know, um, using a steel chain and a theodolite and, uh, and working with a dot, dot matrix printer. This is for the modern land surveyor. So what, why do I think that this book needs to be written? Uh, you know, there's a lot of other excellent books on boundary surveying. So I have a couple here. Uh, there's uh, evidence and procedures for, for boundary location. Uh, there's boundary retracement, processes and procedures. Uh, there's Brown's uh, boundary, boundary principles. Um, there are others, so there are a handful of books on boundary surveying. All of those are excellent books. I have read them all. If you follow me on YouTube, you'll know uh, that I do uh, book study notes and videos uh, on some of those books, chapter by chapter. Uh, so they are, they are very important books. I know them well. I call Brown's the, bound, uh, the Boundary Surveying Bible. So those are excellent books, and if you're going to be a boundary surveyor, you need to read them. Uh, having said that, I think there's a gap. I think there's a gap in the books that are available for the modern boundary surveyor, and I, I want to fill that gap. So what, what is the gap? The, the gap is uh, the lack of a book that tells you how to execute a boundary survey from start to finish. You know, what's step one? When you're finished with step one, what's step two? What's step three? Uh, there just there just isn't a book like that 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 I'm aware of. So a lot of good books, you know, a lot of these books teach you the the legal principles. They teach about things like junior senior rights and simultaneous conveyances versus sequential conveyances, and you know the uh, the role land title plays in boundary surveying. And they teach you about you know the types of rights in land, things like that. So all of those are really important principles or concepts, but they're not practical, right? They're not a you, you know, I give you an address or a tax assessor parcel number, what do you do? You know, what do you do if you're a, a land survey technician uh, to get from point, you know, from the starting point to the finish point? So I feel like a book like that needs to be written. I think it's really important. 
Now, when I've talked to this, talked to some other surveyors about writing this book, because it's something that it's been on my mind for a few years. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for me to hear um, other surveyors say, "You can't write that book. There's no recipe for boundary surveying. Every parcel is unique." And I think that's true to an extent. I think every boundary survey it is unique. Every parcel of land is unique. Um, I don't fully agree with the critics, though, because I think that a framework is important. So I'm not trying to, to, to do a cookie-cutter recipe, but I do think a, a loose framework is immensely helpful. And you know what? I, I've assembled this, this workflow for my own practice as a boundary surveyor. Um, you know, nobody taught it to me. I, I had to assimilate it from other boundary surveyors I worked with. I worked with a really good boundary surveyor named Brett Setness. He taught me a lot. Um, some of it I learned from him. Some of it I just beat my head on. You know, I learned through experience. Some of it not always pleasant. Some of it I, I have absorbed by talking to other, uh, other boundary surveyors. Kevin Genesee is another boundary surveyor that I ask questions, uh, I, that, that I will call to ask questions. We talk a lot. Um, but it's been, it's been hard for me. You know, it's taken me 20, 25 years to, to develop the workflow that I have. And I just, I don't want it to be that hard for the next generation of boundary surveyors. It should be easier than that. And it's not, it's, it's really tough. And I know boundary surveying is not easy. It, it is a complicated craft or, or profession, but we can make it easier for the next generation of surveyors. And I want this book to, to help do that. So that's part of the reason why I, I want to write the book. I think it's needed. Um, I, I want to help future generations of surveyors. The other reason is I, I think my team needs the book. <laughs> you know, so the, we hire a lot of young professionals here at Redefined Horizons. Most, most of them don't have a ton of experience. And so I could use this book in my own practice to teach my people how to be good boundary surveyors. Um, so I need to write the book anyways, but I think it's the type of book that can help well beyond the, the limits of my organization, far outside this building that I'm sitting in today. So I think it can help others. And the final reason I want to write this book is because I love boundary surveying. Um, you know, I, I probably could have done a lot of different things um, as a profession and been and been mildly successful. Uh, but I think you know, I, I I feel sometimes like I was meant to to be a boundary surveyor. That's what I'm passionate about. I love it. You know, people that know me, you know, tell me I work all the time, and that's true. But it doesn't really feel like work when you when you're passionate about it and you love what you do. So um, I would I would really be excited to be able to to make this contribution to boundary surveying. And I, I see a real need here and I, I think I may be in a position to help, help meet that need. So what am I asking for? If you're on the, on the crowdfunding page, what am I asking for? Uh, so I'm asking for a monetary contribution to fund the writing, editing, layout, and multimedia production for the book. So uh, it's, it's writing the content, it's laying it out as a PDF, uh, I'm going to try and do a, a book that's very visually appealing, you know, that has uh, that has good graphics and and appealing text layout. Uh, that's why we're going to go with PDF as the final the final published form of the book. Um, it, there's going to be a multimedia component, so I want to do audio and video versions of each chapter. So that takes time. So it's it's going to be a lot of work to get the book put together, and so that's why I'm asking for help. I didn't want to go through a traditional publisher. Uh, for a couple reasons. One is, I don't think most traditional publishers are, are set up to do the kind of multimedia uh, experience that I would like to do with this book. You know, it's it's for the modern land surveyor, so I think that's important. Uh, it's important to, to have those other media forms of the, of the book content available. And the other thing, uh, the other reason why I didn't go with the traditional publisher is a, I want to, at some point in the near future, after the book is finished, release it under a Creative Commons license. Well, what does that mean? That means the book will be available for free in its basic format uh, to anybody that wants to download it uh, forever. So it's something that I can leave behind for future generations of land surveyors, land surveyors in all different parts of the world. Um, and that would make me feel really, uh, really incredible to be able to do that. Um, that obviously lacks some appeal to a traditional book publisher. You know, they're interested in retaining the, the copyright and selling, selling as many copies as they can. So I decided to go with the crowdfunding approach. I wanna, I wanna be able to fund some of my time and some of the time that, of the people that are gonna help me to actually get the book produced, but then I wanna go ahead and release it under a Creative Commons license. I eventually would like to turn that book over to a nonprofit um, 
to be a kind of a steward of the book, you know, as, as technology advances and time goes on and the law changes, the book will need to be updated. So hopefully I can find a, a, a nonprofit that will be able to take that on and be a good steward of the book. So this is, I'm not writing this book because I, I want to be, you know, acquire vast riches. I don't think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> but um, I would like to, to fund the book so I can be serious about it, give it the time it needs, apply the resources that it needs and really put together a, a, a good textbook that we can leave behind for future generations. So if you decide to contribute, uh, what, what are some of the perks that you're gonna get as a contributor? Um, so there, there's two levels of contribution that I came up with. One is just if you're a regular computer, uh, excuse me, contributor, a regular contributor, you're gonna get two things. You're gonna get a PDF copy of each chapter as I complete it, and you'll have the opportunity to share feedback on that. And then you're going to get lifetime access to the audio and video versions of each chapter of the book. Um, and, and those will be downloadable and they'll be online. You'll be able to, to get to them forever. If you want to go ahead and contribute a little higher level, what we call the premium contributor, um, you're going to get four extra chapters. So there's four chapters in the book I call extra bits. You'll, you'll have access to those. I'm not going to make those freely available under the, the Creative Commons license. Um, so if you, if you contribute at that next higher level, that's exclusive content that you're gonna be able to get. You'll also be able to download some sample exams and study guides for each chapter. So if you're like me and you plan on using that book to train your, your team, whether that's in public, private, or public practice or private practice, um, if, you're, if you contribute at a premium level, you'll, you'll have access to the, the sample exams and study guides for each chapter. You'll also be able to get to the downloadable checklist that we're going to develop as part of each chapter. And then I will have a section in the book where I list all of the premium contributors. Uh, so you'll be able to see your name there. Um, it, if you'd like to contribute as an organization rather as an individual, uh, I, I'm, I'm welcome to allow organizations to do that. If they'd like to do that, they could reach out to me about uh, making a contribution as an organization and we'll have a separate section uh, for organizational sponsors if, if, if I have organizations that would like to do that. So what if, there, what if you can't afford to make a donation but you want to contribute? If you have experience as a surveyor, you can reach out to me. I can sign you up as a better reader. Uh, you know, you can get early drafts of the, of the chapter, the table of contents, and, and you can give me feedback on those. I can sign you up as an editor. You can help me, you know, catch typos and misspellings. Um, if, if you're uh, familiar with social media and you know how to work with WordPress content management system and you want to help, you can reach out. I can use help uh, with social media and uh, maintaining the, there will be a website for the book. You can help me set that up and, and keep it up to date. So um, what's the timing going to be like? Uh, so if I'm able to meet my funding goal and I, I can get the, the funding I need to write the book, how long do you have to wait? So here's my goal. Uh, I believe I'm going to run the, the fundraising campaign for 60 days. If it looks like in a couple weeks I'm on track to hit the goal, um, that'll be great. I will actually start working on the content before the, the campaign even finishes. And my goal is to get four chapters done per month. So four chapters per month, that includes the audio and the video. Um, that means uh, the book's about 20 chapters. So that means four chapters a month or one chapter a week. Um, it'll, it'll still take me six months to finish the book. In the meantime, I'm running a business. Uh, so um, that's an ambitious goal, but I think I can meet it, especially if I have some help. Um, so my goal is to do four chapters a week, get through the 20 chapters or 20 or so chapters and have the... Uh, what I'm gonna call the first version, the preliminary PDF version of the book available in six months to all the contributors. And then I'm gonna probably take uh, three to six months after that to uh, get everybody's feedback addressed and incorporate their comments and make the edits that we need to make, um, get, get all the multimedia content on the website. So probably 12 months to get the finished version of the book um, that I'll be able to release publicly and hopefully turn over to the nonprofit that, that'll take care of it. During that time, I will be making, I'm gonna I'll make a commitment to contributors to do a, a short monthly video update. So I'll, I'll release the chapters as they're finished. So I should be getting one chapter a week, roughly. Um, and then once a month, I'll give you a video update, let you know how the book is going, um, respond to questions and feedback. Um, so that's the deal. So if, if you are a, a boundary surveyor and you agree with me that there's a need for this book, um, 
and you can make a, a small donation. I think the where we've set the contribution levels are, are less than you would typically take, pay for a traditional paper textbook. Um, that would be great. I think we're going to deliver way more value than, than you get uh, with a traditional paper textbook uh, with the multimedia and the extras. Um, if you're a young surveyor and you think this book will help you be a better boundary surveyor, you know, and you can afford to contribute, I encourage you to do that. And uh, hopefully I will be able to uh, raise the goal, the funding goal. We'll meet the funding goal for the book. And in six months to a year, we'll have a new book, uh, a new book for boundary surveyors entitled uh, The Practical Guide to Boundary Surveying for the Modern Land Surveyor. And uh, I look forward to being able to, to work on the book and get to know my contributors. And um, I look forward to having the opportunity to, to leave this behind for future generations of, of boundary surveyors.